Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So I've been on sabbatical for a little bit over two months, and I'm sorry Maya Mondays went dark during that time. I'm back playing with the app, loving it. And right after my sabbatical, I had the opportunity to go up to Toronto to uh, to see what's coming in the future of Maya. And I can honestly say, coming off of the 2015 release and the extension release, seeing the stuff that the guys are working on for the next uh, next couple versions of Maya, I couldn't be more excited. The app looks absolutely amazing. I wish I could share with you in detail, you know, what what's going on. Unfortunately, I can't, but I can honestly say I haven't been more excited about where we're at and where we're going with the application. Totally killer features are coming coming down the road. So I did the new feature video for uh, for the extension release. This is obviously the the file that I set up to uh, to talk about color management. And there was a couple things that I didn't get a chance to highlight in the new feature video that I want to share with you today, and some tips and tricks sort of along the way. So what we've got here is we've got a color managed scene. I'm working in uh, my Render space is a Rec 709 sRGB linear color space. On top of that, I've got a viewer transform applied to sort of get everything looking correct inside of the viewport. So we're just using an sRGB value for that. And what I want to do is talk to you about the color picker a bit today because the way it works and the extension release is actually it's pretty awesome. So if I use my control left middle button to adjust my exposure or my middle button will give me slightly larger ranges, the right button obviously gives me very um, integer value changes to that. I can go ahead and start to push this to where his leg, you know, his leg might be blue. And if you just click the exposure button here, it allows you to jump between your your last state and the zero value. So you can see that his leg is is obviously a little bit blue, but if we start to push that exposure up, you know, those pixels kind of start to burn to white. So what happens with the color picker if we're trying to match the color of this blue maybe onto this this ball's shader? Well, what it does is it actually shows you and I've got manage color pots turned on. It's a good idea to just pretty much always leave that turned on. So these values that we're seeing inside of here, oops, I just turned that guy off. Let's turn that back on. The values that we're picking with the color picker and working with in the color swatches are actually in float, right? So they're going to be they're going to be interesting numbers that we're going to see when we start to move this color picker over top of our character's leg. So let's just kind of zoom in here a little bit. Grab that color picker one more time, and you'll see that you know, if I'm on top of a white pixel, it's showing me the swatch in my view transform space. So it's really letting me see, okay, yeah, I am touching that sort of white pixel, or maybe I'm touching the black pixel or a dark blue pixel. But look at the RGB values, even when it's on a value, or a, the color swatch is showing white. Those RGB values are represented in the actual rendered color space. So this is in the linear color space. You can see that, you know, obviously that the, the numbers are very low. Um, because again we're working in float, but you can see that the blue really is pushed a lot more than the red and the green. So it's giving me a good representation of even though I'm I'm seeing a white pixel in my viewer transform space, in my render space I'm actually picking a a blue color, right? Pretty straightforward there. So let's go ahead and just drop that exposure back down a little bit more, and you can really get a sense of of how that worked. So that's all well and good if you're working inside of Maya. The really kind of fresh thing about this is, or the cool thing about this is, if you go ahead and you use this color picker to select a swatch outside of Maya, it actually knows, well, hey, I'm picking a color inside of Photoshop or in, in a web browser. Let me go ahead and pick that and, and try to match that in the, in the appropriate color space. So watch what happens if we, um, if we dock Maya over to our left-hand side here. And I just use my uh, Windows key to do this. So if you use your Windows left or right key, it'll allow you to dock the app. Windows up key will let you dock it vertically. Obviously, you can also just do a simple drag and drop to, to tag it over to that guy. Oh, this is something that's also uh, worth mentioning. Last week, a new service pack came out. So if you were running Maya 2015, you can get that service pack off the knowledge base. If you're running the extension, you can get that service pack off of the subscription. So um, service pack 5, Lots of bug fixes inside of there. It's a 300 meg patch, so it's definitely worth downloading and getting that guy. So let's jump back into our color picking story here. So what we've got is we've obviously got the ability now, and this is, I think, pretty unique to Maya, to pick color swatches outside of the actual application. So it knows that if I've jumped into, into um, Photoshop, I'm going to be picking that sort of in a, in a standard RGB nonlinear workflow here. So it's going to basically grab the correct color value for me. Obviously, if we turn off the show manage color pots, it's not going to look appropriate. So that's why we're going to always leave that guy turned on. But the ability to pick colors in the linear color space in the viewport and then jump maybe outside of Maya and pick the right color in the nonlinear color space inside of Photoshop, 
is is pretty unique to the color picker inside of Maya, and it really illustrates the uh, the thought that the designers put into the linear color workflow that it shipped with the extension release inside of uh, 2015. It it's just really rock solid, and I'm I'm pretty excited about it. So thanks again for tuning into Maya Mondays. I'm happy to be back. I'll talk to you guys next week. Cheers.